Okay, so as I use the type tool in Illustrator, the T here, that means just like a word processor, I can go back in and edit and spell correct and add more spaces, change the sizes, do all of that stuff. But notice it does limit what you can do with the text. It lines it all up on a bottom registration line. So I can't actually make the U sink lower than the line without doing it on a separate layer. So once I'm happy with the text, this is what I do. I select it all and I say edit copy, the actual text, right? And then I move to another layer. I lock the original, turn it off, and I say edit paste in place. And then with that copy, you right click on it and you say create outlines. And when you say create outlines, that's like expanding from live trace. It turns each shape, each letter, into its own vector with anchor points, which then allow you to modify them as you wish individually. If I use now the small selection tool and just click on the U, then I can move the U down. Right. Or I can take all of it, the whole thing, and I can squeeze it to fit more with my blocking sketch and move it all together. And then of course I can adjust the individual kerning and sizing individually. So if I don't like that this little bullet point got a little stretched into an oval, I can use my small selection tool, select it, and I can center it, I can just select an anchor and I can kind of bring it in. I actually want it to be a little wonkier. Kind of work with the hand done quality. I might want all of these. I use the lasso to select a lot when I'm using text maybe a little bit smaller since that U is so prominent. Okay, and then I have an option, which is pretty different than the typefaced version, right? I've customized it. And maybe I could even play with making it a little bit thicker now that there are There are individual letters, I can add a stroke to it, and I can kind of add my own bold if I want it, right? Problem is that makes the eye kind of floating, so then I could take the eye, just the, the dot on the eye, push, whoops, push that up a little bit. Is it doing that? <laughs> Weird. I don't know why it's doing that. I just want to move the whole thing. Try the lasso. There we go. Just float it up. And then if I wanted to turn that stroke into the actual typeface so that I can make little corrections like that little bump there, what do I do? I select it all because now it's just a vector and I can go to object, sorry, um, yes, object path outline stroke because I don't want to have strokes in my finished design. And then I can use Pathfinder Good old Pathfinder to move it all together. Blend them all into one. So I just made it bold, even though bold wasn't an option. Right? And then I can correct it in other ways. I can use the blob brush. Just all the little things that we've been introduced to in Illustrator. 
I can use to perfect it. I can use the pencil and the smooth tool to correct mistakes. I can see the mistakes clearly and then customize. The bottom of this H is a horror show. Bring it down a little bit more. And I'm going for something that looks more hand done. Top of the T is a little weird. And you kind of scrutinize it like you would a logo, because type gets looked at. It becomes a focal point kind of right away. Whoops. Be a carefully, uh, be especially mindful of curves, like O's and the curves within E's. And if you're going for something hand done and you have repetitive letters, like the N, make sure you customize it so they're not exactly the same. So I might, you know, thin it out on this side a little bit with the pencil tool. So that's how you customize. So that's one type solution, just black, that I think works pretty well. If I turn off the sketch, and I see it with my spot illustration on white, then I can decide, okay, I want the whole thing to maybe move over a little bit. Be more centered under the design, because you don't need to be a slave to your sketch. And I think, yeah, that works pretty well. I like it. So why did I um, keep the the typeface version before I outlined it into vectors. Well, if I unlock that and I do the same thing, select it all with the type tool. Come on, where are you? Be on the right layer. And then copy, Command C, and then make a new layer, lock the one behind, and then edit, paste in place. Now I can move that underneath this is usually what i do right select it all and i can try a different typeface in fact i can just scroll through them and get a sense with that extra spacing that's kind of fancy looking i might keep that one and then just fix a little bit of it. Like I don't need, the kerning isn't as bad in that. Bring that in. I like the way the, the uh, T and the H already automatically combine there in the spacing. I do need to work on the kerning for the bullet point. Yeah. That's actually a fairly nice solution, too. In fact, I think with this, with all this flourish, I don't need the bullet point at all. Oops. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. These are the, the games we play with type design. Okay, so if I like this solution and I wanted to take this one seriously, what would be the next step? Just like before, I would copy it, lock it, turn it off, paste it above, and then right click with the large selection tool and create outlines. Once I've created outlines, they are individual vectors, which means I can't correct spelling or play with uh, the typeface size anymore, but I can do things like stretch them, drop them even lower,
like that. And so that's fully customized. If I wanted some other special effects, you know, I can make them droop and bleed. I did a melting one not too long ago. So I just took my pencil tool and I made little droplets come out the bottom. So once they're a vector, you can do anything you want to them. Okay, let's turn that off. Go back to the type, duplicate it. Copy, new layer on top, edit, paste in place, bring it down. Type always goes on top of other type because it doesn't want to rest on top of itself. Select it all with the type tool. I can try a different typeface. Some of them are more readable than others. Some of them are in color, some of these newer ones. I think this one's pretty interesting. So I'm going to play with this a little bit. And even while it's still a type tool, you can use the large selection tool to, to stretch it. Okay, so then if I want to take that one seriously, what do I do? I can adjust the kerning. It's good not to miss this step. So take the U and maybe bring that in a little bit closer. Play with the spacing here. Play with the spacing with the T. Maybe make the E a little bit bigger. So much stuff to do. Okay, and then if I like that, I select it all, copy it, paste it, right click it with the large selection tool, create outlines. Then I can move the whole thing down. And I have it as vectors that I can modify by hand. So I can drop down the U. For instance, like so. Because now they're just vector shapes. A little bit bigger. Okay, so now I'm only going to put my three kind of finished options up. And which one do I like the best? And I can go on to mess with them. Oh, that's type. What do you guys think of those three options? Which one should I pursue? First one? I'm kind of feeling that way too. But it's good. You see how easy it is to try different solutions? So like scroll through and see. And I don't need to delete any of these. Right? I just turn them off. Yeah, and I like that better than yes. So this is good. It's underplayed. Simple. Okay. 